Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the series. This video is a problem solving skills video on the topic of uh, superposition. And that in this video, I will discuss the structure of superposition problems. And, uh, and uh, in, the, in the next few videos, I will tend to some other aspects of superposition problems. Now, I've decided to uh, cut the videos or uh, shorten them a bit uh, to, and, and present the material in smaller chunks. Uh, so they become more manageable that way and uh, less uh, less time consuming for you to watch. You can go to the subtopic that you want to take a look at and, uh, and take a look at that video alone if you want to. So the topic uh, today is on superposition and the structure of superposition problems. And of course, I think uh, the first thing we should do is uh, to talk about what superposition is all about. And here I will give you a brief kind of a description of what what superposition is and in the future videos i will be sort of like more formal and provide you with a more accurate uh, description of superposition problems but for now we we should understand that superposition relates to the activity of adding and subtracting the values of certain quantities to arrive at the value of some other quantity Basically, it's additions and subtractions that are under scrutiny, if you like, when we work with superposition problems. And uh, in order to explain what, what I mean by all this, uh, let's actually take a look at a few problems and the equations that go with those problems and then see uh, how we break the equation down along the lines of superposition and make sense of it. So the, next, uh, the first problem today is uh, on the right side. You had 1,200 vaccination shots Monday morning, 200 shots were used on Monday, 420 shots were used on Tuesday. On Wednesday, you received a delivery of 1,500 shots and 720 shots were used. How many shots will you have Thursday morning? Now, for these problems, I will show you the model only. Um, and for this one, we're going to use the symbol N as the number of shots that you have Thursday morning. And of course, the unit is the unit of counting, which in this case is 1. And n becomes equal to, we begin with the number of shots that we had Monday morning, which was 1,200. And then we subtract the shots that were used on Monday. And then we subtract the shots that were used on Tuesday. Next, we add the shots that were delivered on Wednesday. And then the shots that were used on Wednesday. <clears throat> so this becomes our equation. Now this is uh, sort of you can think of it as a pure superposition problem. Uh, superposition again relates to the activity of adding and subtracting the values of quantities and how these uh, quantities, how these values are related to each other. And uh, in this case we can say for example that this problem is a superposition problem and, in, and it involves the terms 1200 including n by the way it involves n 1,200, 200, 420, 1,500, and 720. Now let's take a look at a problem that's a little bit uh, more complicated. Problem 2 on the right side, calculate the mass of one mole of C4H10. The molar masses of C and H are 12.01 grams per mole and 1.008 grams per mole respectively. The model for this problem for this one, we will use the symbol M for the mass of one mole of C4H10, and that's measured in grams. And the M becomes equal to the mass of four more moles of carbon plus the mass of uh, 10 moles of uh, hydrogen. Now this problem, in this problem, the main operation is addition, of course. Uh, as we have discussed before, we always use additions and subtractions to break an expression into terms. So in that sense, the addition is the main operation. Now, within the two things that are being added, these are the two terms, we also have multiplication. Uh, but we, see, can, we can choose to see this problem as, uh, as, the, uh, as a superposition problem that involves the three terms m, 12.01 times 4, and 1.008 times 10. So this is a superposition, of, uh, a superposition problem involving three terms. Okay, uh, our next problem, problem number three, says calculate the mass of 9.6 moles of C4H10. So this is similar to problem number two, except that problem number two asked for the mass of one mole, and now we want to find the mass of 9.6 moles. 
And of course, what we can do is we can place the mass of one mole inside brackets and then multiply it by 9.6. And here is the model for this problem. Again, M is the mass of uh, this time 9.6 moles of C4H10 in grams. And M becomes equal to 9.6. And then we open bracket. And now within bracket, we put the mass of one mole of C4H10. That's uh, the mass of four moles of C plus the mass of 10 moles of H. And now we close the bracket. Now, in this problem, the, uh, there is only one term on the right side. The whole thing here is one term. And this one term uh, has two factors. Factors are things within terms that you multiply. And the two factors are 9.6 multiplied by the bracket. The bracket is the second factor. Now, within the second factor, we have a superposition. We are superposing 12.01 times 4 and 1.008 times 10. Uh, so in this case, superposition is not the main operation, the main activity, but sub-activity happening within a factor. We'll move on to problem number four now. Calculate the mass of one mole of CaOH2. The mass of one mole of Ca is 40.08 grams. The molar masses of O and H are 16 grams per mole and 1.008 grams per mole, respectively. Now, the model for this problem Again, as usual, we use the letter M. Uh, I should say the symbol M, if I want to be formal. Uh, and that represents the mass of one mole of CaOH2 in grams. And uh, M becomes equal to the mass of, of course, uh, one mole of Ca, which is 40.08. And to this, we add the mass of two moles of OH. OK. In this problem, there are three terms. One is on the left, that's M. On the right side, we have 40.08, and then two times the bracket. The addition here breaks the expression on the right side into two terms, 40.08 and two times the bracket. Now, so, so in one way, in one sense, uh, addition or superposition is the main activity here. Uh, we are saying that M is equal to this term, the value in this term, plus the value in, this, in the second term. But it also appears as part of the second term within the second factor when we superpose the mass of oxygen and also hydrogen. All right, uh, so uh, there is one more problem that we would like to look at. Uh, problem five says you bought three pens at 210 per pen. What amount of money did you spend? And the model for this problem becomes A is the amount of money I spent in dollars. And A becomes equal to 2.1 times 3. And that's pretty much it for this, uh, uh, for this equation. Uh, now, this equation has only one term on the right side. And one may ask whether we can think of it as a superposition problem. It actually is, uh, can be classified as a proportion problem. Uh, but it could also be thought of as, as a superposition problem that involves these two terms, A and uh, 2.10 times 3. But as we will see later on, such problems, if classified as superposition, would be pretty trivial. And, uh, and therefore, some people may not choose to consider them to be superposition problems. I choose to, to say that they are, uh, and, uh, and because all of the, all of the conclusions and, uh, and uh, claims that we make about superposition problems do hold for the case of having only one term on the right side as well. Now, let's take a quick look at the five models that we got here. Again, in model number one, for problem number one, we have uh, just a bunch of numbers that we are adding and subtracting. And, uh, and superposition is pretty much the only thing that's here. Problem number two, superposition uh, forms the basis of, of analysis of, of, of the equation. It's the main operation here. Uh, the main operation is addition. And therefore, we see this as a superposition of the, of the term M and uh, the two terms on the right side. For model number three, superposition is not the main operation, but it does appear within a factor within a term. So within brackets here, then you can say that we have a, we are dealing with superposition. Problem number four, you can see superposition as both the main operation and also as an operation within the second term. In fact, within the second factor of the second term. And therefore, we can say that uh, we are dealing with superposition both here and also within the second term here. 
And as I just mentioned, uh, we choose to consider this to also be a superposition problem uh, that involves only one term. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for the uh, for the structure of uh, superposition problems. In the next video, I will be dealing with other aspects of superposition, such as uh, consistency, how to associate uh, meaning to your equations by finding the values of the quantities that the terms represent, uh, followed by um, change in the value of a quantity and other topics. And until then, I will be gone in three, two, and one.